of America. I'm Steve. You're ready to fight for you from the Foxhole of Freedom. Giving you better analysis and insight than anyone else. Shining a spotlight on the cockroaches of the swamp. Delivering truth and justice just when hope was starting to fade. Here are three big things you need to know right now to start your day. Number one. In the least shocking report ever written, Rasmussen has discovered that the media is more favorable to Democrats. And I, for one, am shocked to hear that. I know you are, too. Number two, in Michigan, drones are being used to cut down on power outages to customers. How is that going to work? Well, I'm not sure yet, but we can discuss it. And number three, wow. Wow, that's about all I can say about how hard the left and many on the right came out against Ron DeSantis, both before and after his announcement live on Twitter to jump into the race for president. Of course, the Twitter live feed was a mess to start with. It seems that Elon Musk and his team were not prepared for the amount of people that wanted to see it, and it was not good. I think that's being a bit kind. Anyhow, the conversation was also billed as honest and unscripted. That is not how it seemed out of the gate, at least. In fact, some people called it a, well, a Shiite show. It was only audio, which was a terrible choice, too. But Ron DeSantis is in the race, no matter how messy it was to get rolling. And honestly, more people are worried about policies than how polished somebody is. I mean, how else could you explain Joe Biden hiding under a couch and still gaining control of the West Wing? You can cry foul all you want, but at the end of the day, millions of people cast ballots for a guy that could not attract ants to a bag of spilled sugar. Or answer a single unscripted question under any circumstances. And he's only getting worse. It was a technical mess. And everyone jumped on it, the press and the Trump campaign. I'll get back to that. But first, let's talk more about Governor Ron DeSantis. For a guy they claim is so awful, he sure does attract a hell of a lot of attention. I mean, if DeSantis means so little to the Democrats and Joe Biden and is not a threat to former President Donald Trump in his bid for a second term, then why on earth are they carpet bombing this guy from every direction? All sides that want to discredit and smear DeSantis. They seem quite focused on destroying him, and in my experience on the planet, that leads me to believe that it is the governor of Florida that poses the biggest threat to both sides in the run toward the 2024 presidential election. Otherwise, he would not attract this level of acrimony. So let me give you some highlights of the attacks coming from the left before he threw his hat in the ring that were downright vicious and ruthless. I mean, you'd think this guy was Ronald Reagan reincarnated, the same Reagan that has dominated American politics since 1980, even in death. The Reagan legacy lives on and they attack him. Now Ron DeSantis is no Ronald Reagan, as they like to call him, right? For his missile defense systems that, by the way, are still used by almost all Western nations and have even shipped to Ukraine to defend that country. Yes, that all began with Ronald Reagan. The Democrats used to call it Star Wars in a feeble and failed attempt but to discredit the whole program, but they were wrong, like usual. Anyway, I've not seen the left go this crazy in attacking a candidate since Donald Trump came down the escalator in 2015. Those attacks have also never let up. It makes you think, on the Democrat side, they're just as afraid of Ron DeSantis as they were and still are of President Donald Trump. I mean, they realize that their barely coherent candidate, Joe Biden, is in deep trouble against either one of these men. And they're scared out of their minds. So over on MSNBC, the pre-announcement attacks came fast and furious. And not just at Ron DeSantis, but Elon Musk, too. Here's a seriously ill Charlie Sykes taking cheap shots at other folks. Pretty ballsy, really, considering his obvious conditions. Self-righteousness, narcissism, bloviating arrogance, and all the rest, including his white self-loathing. Well, anyhow, listen to this. Well, let's just talk about uh, launching a candidacy with Elon Musk. This is not a parody. Uh, when you, you think about you know, the fact that uh, the governor of Florida decides to launch a bid for president of the United States by bowing the knee to a tech oligarch, somebody who has been very publicly decompensating an erratic, uh, narcissistic megalomaniac like Elon Musk. But on the other hand, uh, it, it's going to generate a huge amount of buzz. We're talking about it now. Um, it will throw a certain amount of chaos in the MAGO world. Um, and uh, it, it is going to be interesting to see how Donald Trump responds. I think it makes it very unlikely that he's going to return uh, to Twitter at this point. But what an extraordinary choice. I mean, uh, for for Ron DeSantis to basically go all in on Elon Musk um, at the time that Elon Musk is, you know, has been displaying um, all of his brain worms, you know, saying all of his brain worms. I mean, golly, apparently, and I didn't realize, 
apparently um, Elon Musk is America's public enemy number one. Did you realize? Because I didn't know. <laughs> now, the Democrats are fully aware they're being called out for failing the American people in this country from the southern border to Ukraine and all points in between. And that it is why Governor DeSantis and President Trump strike fear into their hearts. So let's dive into the conversation, at least for a moment, between DeSantis and Musk. Uh, the technical failures were not as debilitating as I had thought at first, but, you know, they got some headlines. And this may be more of an issue for Elon than it is for the governor. I mean, he can create the EV sector for cars and launch heavy rockets into space, but he can't get a Twitter feed out the door without a complete meltdown. It seems a bit weird, if you ask me, but that's where we are. Here is the announcement from Governor DeSantis. First, listen. Well, I am running for president of the United States to lead our great American comeback. Look, we know our country's going in the wrong direction. We see it with our eyes, and we feel it in our bones. Our southern borders collapse. Drugs are pouring into the country. Our cities are being hollowed out by spiking crime. The federal government's making it harder for the average family to make ends meet and to attain and maintain a middle-class lifestyle. And our president, well, he lacks vigor, flounders in the face of our nation's challenges, and he takes his cues from the woke mob. I don't think it has to be this way. American decline is not inevitable. It is a choice. And we should choose a new direction, a path that will lead to American revitalization. We must restore sanity to our nation. This means embracing fiscal and economic sanity. Stop pricing hardworking Americans out of a good standard of living through inflationary borrow, print, and spending policies. And please embrace American energy independence. This also means replacing the woke mind virus with reality, facts, and enduring principles. Merit must trump identity politics. All right. Must Trump by any politics. Now, I agree with all those things. And I, and, and I want to get to the heart of the sales pitch before we get to the first break here. So here is the heart of the sales pitch from the Florida governor. Listen. Truth needs to be our foundation. Common sense can no longer be an uncommon virtue. And in Florida, we proved it could be done. Uh, we chose facts over fear, education over indoctrination, law and order over rioting and disorder. We held the line when freedom hung in the balance. And we're thriving as a result. Florida's the nation's fastest growing state. We're number one in net in migration, number one in new business formations, recently ranked number one in education. We have a 50 year low crime rate and one of the lowest tax and debt per capita in America. But we also understand governing is not entertainment. It's not about building a brand or virtue signaling. It is about delivering results. And our results in Florida have been second to none. And there you have it. Our results in Florida have been second to none. That's the heart of the sales pitch from Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida. Uh, we're going to dig deeper into this. Hear a couple more comments from the governor and, and, and size up the race where we are right now. All right? Because this is important. This is, well, it's the whole shooting match. All right? I'll take a break. It's the Steve Gruber Show. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 